It's been more than three months since Typhoon Mawar hit Guam shores. And while there already seems to be work to rid the island of the green waste mess left behind, not all has been cleaned up just yet. All the green waste generated by uh, the most recent typhoon opposes like so many like logistic problem, logistical problems for us. University of Guam assistant professor and biosecurity program principal investigator Glenn Dula admitting the problem is bigger than just the debris itself. He says the green waste piles leaves room for the invasive coconut rhinoceros beetle to flourish. There's been some research that shows the availability of green waste, which they breed in, um, contributes to the population explosions of rhino beetles. Um, you know, especially with the most recent typhoon and the generation of so much green waste, uh, we expect, you know, certain months of these of the, the coming year to be pretty, uh, um, I guess, dangerous for the spread of rhino beetle. The rhino beetle first sneaked its way into the territory in 2007. It's been a 16-year battle for the Department of Agriculture, Biosecurity Division and UOG to rid the island of these insects. I guess my biggest piece of advice is to follow any direction or suggestions by the Department of Agriculture because, you know, they are trying to take into account and control the rhino beetle through their processes of managing the green waste. So it can be processed a certain way. Um, you know, what, what is difficult to account for is all the green waste that's just laying off to the side or like hiding in the jungle. Um, so again, my biggest piece of advice is to not dump your green waste somewhere in the jungle because it can just, you know, rot there, it becomes a breeding site and it just creates more rhino beetles. You know, doing it and processing it through the government of Guam um, would be the best way to uh, handle that. Because of the increased volume of unmanaged green waste, Dula says an update on the beetle's population would not be available until possibly the end of the year. Adding green waste rotting happens slowly over months and the life cycle of the beetle in perfect conditions takes about three months. Although the chipping of the green waste will possibly accelerate this process, it still hasn't been studied. His team won't expect any changes for a while, but if and when it does, they have the historical data to compare it to. Dula says the eradication of the rhino beetle has to also come from the island public themselves. I would just hope that people understand that, you know, they all play a role in protecting the island's natural resources. We always say that invasive species are everyone's responsibility. Yeah, and especially with something that's so widespread as the coconut rhinoceros beetle, you know, again, managing your own green waste in your own home makes a significant impact. Um, at least to, to myself and our management efforts. Dula says there are many ways people could dispose of the green waste responsibly. Burning the waste is a great option if done responsibly with a burn permit from the Guam Fire Department. Hawk Composting and Manhita Farms up in Jigo is the only company so far that does this process, but there is a tipping fee. Biocontrol treatment is another option, but there are no commercially available options on Guam yet, and his team does biocontrol treatment on a small experimental scale. As KUAM reported, UOG as well as Australia, Japan, and New Zealand are working on management strategies specifically biocontrol. So far there are fungal pathogens that can kill the beetle and also different viruses. Research is ongoing and Dula says more funding and efforts are being put into biocontrol research. Julian Hernandez, KUAM News.